You've arrived at this video for one of three reasons. What are you doing here? Number one, you love You've Got Mail and you're looking for validation of that love. Number two, you do not understand why anyone would like You've Got Mail when movies like Die Hard exist and you've come to find out how that's possible. Or number three, you have autoplay on and YouTube's algorithm weirdly thought this video was related to that foot fetish video you were just watching. No matter why you're here, thanks for stopping by. Let's begin. I'm going to come out and say it. I think You've Got Mail is an all-time great movie. And I know I'm not alone in that thought. I'm not saying it's Citizen Kane, The Godfather, or Paddington 2, but I am saying it's a great example of what a rom-com can be. So the next time someone rolls their eyes when you try to tell them that You've Got Mail is a great movie that still holds up despite being based on an AOL instant messenger romance, I want to provide you with some valuable talking points. This is in defense of You've Got Mail. Okay, let's quickly go over what this movie even is. Technically, it's sort of a remake, but this was before remakes and reboots became cool. Okay, what makes you the expert? I was a fool in high school and you weren't. Long before the sound of a dial-up modem, the shop around the corner told a similar story except based on letters, not emails and instant messages. So fine, let's call it a remake, but what is it really? You've Got Mail is the story of two people that fall in love over email and IM, but who despise each other in real life. Joe Fox, played by National Treasure Tom Hanks, is building a book superstore in the same Upper West Side neighborhood as the small children's bookstore run by Universe Treasure, Meg Ryan. I know most of you were born too late to understand my love of Meg Ryan, but when I tell you Meg Ryan owned rom-coms for a time with When Harry Met Sally, Sleepless in Seattle, You've Got Mail, French Kissed, and more, I mean she owned rom-coms. It's like the line in Coming to America when the dad from Good Time says, when I say he's got his own money, I mean he's got his own money. When I tell you he's got his own money, I mean the boy has got his own money! No other person has done more for the rom-com genre aside from galactic treasure Hugh Grant. By the way, he was great in Paddington too. Just saying. You've Got Mail features Hanks and Ryan in their absolute prime. Sure, Sleepless in Seattle is magical, but You've Got Mail is two titans masterfully doing whatever it is titans do. Rom-coming, I'm guessing. Honestly, the entire cast is filled with heavy hitters. Greg Kinnear, Parker Posey, Edith from All in the Family, Steve Zahn from White Lotus, who also happens to be Steve Zahn from National Security, and of course, Dave Chappelle. A lot of people forget this, but I think it's a key part of what makes this movie great. The classic funny friend co-worker trope, but performed by one of the funniest people alive. This isn't the place for this discussion, but another time we can talk about why Undercover Brother is an underrated comedy. You've Got Mail perfectly captures the window in time that was AOL. Before text messaging, really before email was all that widely used, there was AOL, and it was glorious. The sound of a dial-up modem. The weight. The booming You've Got Mail. Slow-loading photos that appeared line by line. What a moment in time it was. A long moment where you just waited. You've Got Mail is a love letter to AOL. And AOL, for better or worse, laid a lot of the foundation of how we communicate now with text, DMs, and a lack of eye contact. You've Got Mail also successfully predicted and warned us about the future, which is now the present. But by the time you watch this, maybe the past? Someone once told me time is a flat circle. The depiction of giant Fox books putting small shops out of business predicted the ever-growing monopolization of the book industry by Amazon. It didn't predict that all the book money would eventually go to space rockets shaped like penises, but you know what? I'm okay with Nora Ephron missing that prediction. Speaking of Nora Ephron, let's go ahead and call her the goat of rom-com writing and directing. And I say that with extreme respect for Nancy Myers, who is also on the rom-com Mount Rushmore. I'm not going to get into who the other Mount Rushmore people are here because I'd have to Google how many people are even on Mount Rushmore and really who has time for that. Back to Nora. It takes creative directing to make scenes where two people are just typing actually seem interesting. Remember, this is before every show featured text messaging because this was before smartphones. On top of being creatively shot, every once in a while we get a line that makes us remember, this is a well-written script. Yes. Those are very powerful words. Yes. In the end, You've Got Mail is a great movie, not because of cinematography or brilliant acting, not because of artsy shots or social commentary. You've Got Mail is a great movie because of how it makes you feel. 
It makes us believe in love and hope in a New York that definitely does not exist for anyone that isn't rich, but whatever, it's the movies and we can dream. It makes us believe in the power of words and the power of connection. It makes us realize that love exists in the small things, and all those small things add up to be the big thing that is love. That's a lousy paraphrase of all this, nothing has meant more to me than so many some things, but you get the point. Some movies just have a way of making us feel good, and sometimes that's all a movie truly needs to be great. So in the end, I guess my defense of You've Got Mail is that watching it makes me feel good. And for that alone, I think it's great. And also because of Meg Ryan. <laughs>